Hey, Shalom. I want to start off saying, Kaal Lagimla, Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Ruchach Kudash, which means give our praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, which is our Lord and Savior, and to the Holy Spirit. The Thaum Mashan Akabah Lahaz Kareem, Shalash Allah, which means give the honors to the elders of Israel, which is the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, who teach and will wear. And Shalom, Mahalabaki Yahshua Allah, which means peace and love to the elect of Israel. Come on with you again to the spirit power of Yahweh Shem Hashem, by Shem Chakudash, with another lesson on the border of Anah from the JMS Memphis Count. Lesson go be on this um this article uh, that was published um in 2015 on uh, December 22nd on uh, 2015. You know, so right it's our uh, name of this. It come from HuffPost.com. I try to leave the link in our description box. So right it said um. You know, Jay, I'm going to say Jay for his name, you know, because hey, at this point, you still call on, you know, Jay, JC, CC Boy Jail. Hey, the Lord really ain't dealing with you, man. It's time to come out of that, man. It's time to stop calling him that, man, because that's not his name, man. Jesus is not his name, man. His name is Yahweh Shai, you see? But it say um, Jay wasn't white, and he why that matters, right? It does matter. It matter for truth's sake. If it didn't matter, he wouldn't put his skin complexity in the Bible, man. You know? So, right. Let me get this. This is the truth is um uh, um uh, picture of the of our Lord, man, according to the Bible. Revelation the fourth chapter, Lord, I'm gonna grab that. You know, the way image of, you know, you know what, J C according to the Bible. Revelation one, the fourth chapter. One through um fifteen, you know. Um, Daniel ten five and six. So it it it's in the Old Testament and the New Testament, man. You can't get around it, you know. Can't get around it. You have a shot, man. That's our Lord and Savior. That's His name, man. You know. When was the letter J invented? You know, what it say? It was until fifteen twenty four when Jen, what am I saying? All right, uh, Italian Renaissance. You know, so right. If the letter J was invented until sixteen hundreds, how did J get his name? You see, the short answer is the name J was not given or received over two thousand years ago. So what was they calling him then? You see, let me get the quick scripture. This um, Proverbs thirty four. I don't play the video. It said, who had ascended up into heaven or descended? Who had gathered the winds in his fist? Who had bound the waters in his garment, in a garment? Who had established all the ends of the earth? What is his name and what is his son's name if thou canst tell, man? You know? So uh, what it is, man? You know? Get this real quick, John. John 7, 38. He that believe on me, the scripture has said, out of the belly should flow rivers of living water, man. So, hey, you got to believe what the scripture say, man. If the scripture say you're a dog skin man with white will of hills, that's it, man. That's him. You know? He don't say he had blonde hair, blue eyes. You know? He doesn't say that. You know, and, and, and uh, leprosy is it, a curse, man. You know? So, right, I'm going to play this video, man. You know, Lord willing to be edified. Well, when they play, man, my Wi-Fi, you know, going out, man. You can find him on t-shirts, posters, jewelry, dishes. There's even a toaster that will put his face on your bread. And I'm not talking about your favorite pop star. I'm talking about Jesus. Regardless of your religious beliefs or what part of the world you're in, chances are you could pick Jesus out of a lineup. Shoulder length, dirty blonde hair, blue eyes, beard, washboard abs of steel. I feel like there's a CrossFit joke in there somewhere. But this globally recognized version of Jesus didn't come from Bethlehem. This guy's actually a 20th century American. The 1941 Head of Christ painting is the most widely reproduced piece of artwork in world history, making this the most popular Jesus. 
So what did Jesus actually look like? Well, the earliest drawings of Jesus and his disciples dates back to 235. In the first images, he was too young for facial hair, but the hair on his head was short and curly. And in the fourth century, Jesus starts popping up in Roman catacombs with short dark hair, a beard, and noticeably melanated skin. People have been arguing about Jesus' appearance basically since the beginning of time. The Bible doesn't ever mention Jesus' race, which makes sense. She won't. It does. It does. Hebrews said for his nationality, man. For it is evidence that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. No, Judah is the top head tribe of the nation of Israel, man. You see? So. What, what you <laughs> you see, man? His race, man. His nationality is is a Jew, man, from the tribe of Judah, man, an Israelite, man. You know, twelve tribes, man. You know, make up Israel, man. Judah, Benjamin, Levi, all the way down to Issachar, man. Gad, Reuben, Naphtali, Zebulun, Ephraim, Manasseh, Asher. You see. Nymphthabli, Issachar, you, you, you see? The 12 tribes, man, you know? I don't want to play now. Christianity had to be universal for it to spread, so there was no point in confining him to one race or another. But one of the biggest disputes among theologists had nothing to do with his skin color, but his level of attractiveness. On one hand, a plain and average Jesus would be relatable and non-threatening, but on the other hand, how could a holy savior be anything other than gorgeous? In 2001, the BBC TV series Son of God did a facial reconstruction of Jesus using forensic science. Combined with the early artistic portrayals, ethnic traits, and the fashion of the day, the finished product was a dark-skinned, bearded, short-haired Jesus. So how did Jesus go from looking like a dark-haired Jewish guy to a white, blonde guy? Starting in the Middle Ages, that's somewhere around 476, and especially in the Renaissance. Right, the Renaissance. And guess what? <laughs> the Bible said it. Revelation, um... 20? Let me take you straight to the point, man. No, Revelation 21. And I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key of the boundless pit and a great chain in his hand, you know. Boundless pit, you know. Europe, you see. Chain, the great chain, you know, slave too. And he lay hold on that dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and say, and bat him a thousand years, the, the um, dark ages, man. No? And cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loose a little season. And guess what? We in that little season now, man. The Renaissance period, man. The book of folks, um, and grab it. Post Maccabees 3 and 48. It said, And laid open the book of the law, wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their image. You see? What's the book of the law? The Bible, man. You know? You can get a scripture on that. This book 4 and 1. This is the book of the commandments of the Most High, and the law that endure forever. You see? Plain and simple, man. That's why Job. 9, 24, the earth is given to the hand of the wicked. Who is the wicked? Esau, Edom. You know, that old serpent, the devil. You see, the wicked. You know, you read that, Malachi, the first chapter. That should call him the border of wickedness, Malachi 1 and 4. Esau, Edom, man. He covered the faces of the judges thereof, right? He covered the faces of the judges thereof. What? Our Lord, you know, Yahweh shot, man. If not, where well, and who is he? Right, who is he then, man? If the so-called white man didn't do that, man, you know. Artists began depicting Jesus as white, usually with blue eyes and blondish hair. Many speculate that the turn was influenced by Bible verses that use lightness to symbolize purity and darkness for sin and evil. 
On the surface, white or light equaling good and pure and black, and especially in the Renaissance, artists began depicting Jesus as white, usually with blue eyes and blondish hair. Many speculate that the turn was influenced by Bible verses that use lightness to symbolize purity and darkness for sin and evil. On the surface, white or light equaling good. What do they gotta do with your skin color, man? You see? <laughs> But hey, you still got our people still calling themselves black though, man. You know? The Lord wants a dark skinned man. Ain't no ain't nobody on this planet black, man. You know, you a uh, light a light shade of brown to a dark shade of brown, man. What it say, uh he uh, formed man from the dust of the earth. Whatever you dig in the ground, you know, it just get darker, man. Ain't nobody white, you know? You uh, a a light shade of uh, pinkish red to a dark shade of red, man. You know? Pure and black or dark equaling evil and bad seems harmless. But when bias gets put in the mix, things get dicey. Medieval Christians didn't like the idea of Jesus being dark skinned and dark haired because that meant he looked Jewish. Spoiler alert, he was Jewish. I know I know such thing as Jewish. You know? I know I know such thing as that. You know? The uh, ISH mean uh, like like uh, pertaining to I believe man. When you want to be like a Jew, you know. And Jew is short for Judah, the uh, the Negro tribe, you know, the uh, the Southern uh, Southern tribe man. Jew just um, uh, short for uh, Judah Bishman Levi man. You see. Because medieval Christians didn't like Jewish people. In fact, they were actually the first to force them into ghettos, complete like with ghettos special. To Israelites, you know, well, the ghettos um, uh, force um, uh, it's like compared to live, you know, what's the paraphrasing that definition? And hey, let me get John. No, it's John Maya. Fourteen to two. Drew the morning in their gates, they were language and they are black onto the ground. And the ground of Jerusalem is going up, man. So the true Israelites, you know, this is how we can identify, man. You know, this is why we say the so-called blacks, Hispanics, Latinos, and Native American Indians, or all the real Jews, man, all the real Israelites, according to the Bible. And they will keep doing that job, man. Armbands, both of which were later revived by the Nazis in the 1930s. Yikes. That light equals good and dark equals bad idea even carried over into anti-Semitic propaganda. Jewish people were portrayed as dark and menacing with giant noses, darker complexions, and bushy facial hair. And you can't really oppress Jewish people when your own savior looks Jewish. Thus, white Jesus gained more popularity. But the medieval Christians weren't the only ones to use this new and improved white Jesus to justify oppression. Can anyone say colonialism? In the 1600s, Catholic missionaries sprung up all over the new world with plans to convert the indigenous people. This conversion included enslavement, forcing many to abandon their native languages and traditions, genocide, and of course, stealing their land. Again, we see this narrative of dark-skinned people being bad, thus needing to be tamed or killed in order to conform to this good or white standard. Hello, white supremacy. Now here's where things get interesting. This is what it is, man. White Jesus is, is, is oppressive, man. During slavery, you see two very different versions of Jesus and Christianity spring up. For pro-slavery Christians, converting slaves to Christianity and getting rid of their heathenistic religions and languages was part of their godly mission. Sla yeah. Um, Jeremiah, what's that, 17? Jeremiah 17 and 4. And thou, even thyself, shall discontinue from thy inheritance that I gave thee. You know, we forgot who we was, you know? That beat the, um, that nationality out of us, you know? Change our names, get, um, bow us, probably. Hey, the curses, man. You know, doing one twenty eight fifteen, All the way down to 6 to 8. It said, And I will cause thee to serve thy enemies in the land which thou knowest not. For ye have kindled our fire and my anger, which should burn forever, man. You know? So we say slave owners use religion as a mean of control, man. 
slave owners used religion as a means of control and persuaded slaves to convert with the promise of heaven and spiritual freedom, not to be confused with freedom freedom. But black slave ministers zeroed in on God freeing the slaves from Egypt, not to mention Jesus' persecution, execution, and resurrection is a classic good overcoming evil story. And to the horror of slave owners, many slave rebellions were inspired by that very triumph. And despite these very different versions of being a good Christian, the black church became an incredible pillar of the black community. For slaves who had been separated from their families, the church became a new family and a place of refuge, especially post-Civil War. Heck, the civil rights movement was born in black churches. I'm thinking of a Baptist minister with the initials MLK. Ever heard of him? So what does all this mean? Are we saying that Jesus and Christianity are bad because historically too many people have used it to justify terrible things? Absolutely not. Anything can be twisted and abused, especially religion. But in the same way we try to tackle race and pop culture here, it's important to look at how iconography can also be influenced and shaped for the purpose of oppression. And it's also important to remember that misuse isn't exclusive to any one religion. Today you can see all kinds of depictions of Jesus around the world. There's an Asian version, Native American versions, and tons of artwork with lock sporting black Jesus. There's even a black Jesus TV show. When white oppressive power structures excluded other versions of Jesus' appearance, they were misusing religion to spread discrimination. Now communities across the globe are reclaiming their right to see Jesus however they choose. While a Korean or a black Jesus might not be historically accurate, just like a blonde hair, blue-eyed Jesus, people of color have the right to see themselves in their religion, especially after centuries of being taught and forced to worship a God that doesn't look like them. We aren't saying that white people are wrong for wanting to see a Jesus that looks like them, but that historically, white Jesus has been used to oppress and erase the histories of people of color in a way that Korean Jesus or black Jesus has not. Honestly, we may never know what Jesus really looked like, but whatever you do, don't get me started on white wrong for wanting to see a Jesus that looks like them, but that historically, white Jesus has been used to oppress and erase the histories of people of color in a way that Korean Jesus or black Jesus has not. Honestly, we may never know what Jesus- So she wrong. No. I'm gonna finish the um, video all out. I'm just get it. But we do know what this really looks like. Look. But whatever you do, don't get me started on White Santa, because this video is already way too long. So, do you have any other examples of historical figures being whitewashed? Let us know in the comments below, and we'll. All right, whitewash. Well, the Renaissance period. You see. So, right. This revelation one and one, the revelation of Yahweh Shah Mashrap, which gave so like which the most I gave unto him, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he, and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Revelation, you know? Reveal. So I'm gonna jump down. And 13. And in the midst of the seven candlestick, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt up at the pouch with a girdle. Girdle. His head and his heels were white like wool. It's white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire, man. You see? So he got a uh, short hair, you know, afro, you know, and a beard. And it's white. What what, what national people have woolly hair, man? The so-called Negroes, man. The so uh, the, the so-called blacks, man. White woolly hair, man. So we do know what he looked like. It said, in his feet, like unto fine breads, as if they burnt in the furnace. Now, whenever you burn something, it become darker, man. You can't get around it. You can burn white a white sheet of paper. Guess what? You, <laughs> the paper go turn dark, go turn black. If you want if if that's what you want to say, man. You know, it said, in his voice is the sound of many waters, man. You know, and he had in his right hand seven stars, and of his mouth when it went as sharp to as sword. But that's the point, you know. That's the point, man. His head and his hairs were white like wool, man. And guess what? The Heavenly Father, his, you see? Daniel 7, 9, I bid 
be here to the thrones were cast down in the ancient of days did sit whose garment was white as snow. And the hairs of his head like the pure wool, you know? So this the heavenly father, man, Yahweh. He lets you know he got a body because he's sitting down, man. You know? They're not just no spirit or, you know, like cast or anything, man. You see? It said, um, his throne was like the fire flame and his wheels is burning fire, man. You know? Then you ten. And five, then I lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a son of man clothed in linen, whose lawns were girded with the fine gold of Euphras. His body also was like the burial, and his face is the appearance of lightning, man. You know, he got a garment, I think burial, like green, a green garment, I believe. And his face is the appearance of lightning, because it's saying, uh, I think, Ecclesiastes. It's a wisdom making man's face to shine. In his eyes, his lamps of fire, you know, lamps of fire. Because it say that, you know, he should be, um, represent he's angry too, you know. Genesis 49. I'll come back. He can read this old chapter to, to um, get into the tribes, you know. But Genesis 4, 9, 12. His eyes should be red with wine and his teeth white with milk, man. You know, let you know our Lord's a wine bibble. The Lord drunk wine, you know. So right, man. Then you um, 10. And 6. And his body also was like the bear, and his face is the appearance of lightning, his eyes, his limps of fire, and his arms and his feet, like in like in color to polish brass. And the voice of his words like the more like like the voice of a multitude, man. You know? So hey, Lord will help you edify you going in. The hey, the truth is out, man. That our Lord was a so called um black man from the tribe of Judah, man. You know? The top tribe, man. You see? So with that, you no know, once again, give our praises to you. How about you, my shout With Chakudash, the balance to the apostles and heroes of great wisdom who teach and will wear. Peace and love to the elect. Shalom. Come, Mashallah, Wa Baba.